So we got a two for one today, a double dose of Patreon listener questions. If you want to be part of the Transformer Slag podcast, help us support the podcast. Let us know we're doing a half decent job here in the Transformer world with the Transformer Slag podcast. Patreon.com forward slash protoman or check the pin comment or the description below. What does it get you? It gets your name in the end credit scroll at the end of every segment moving forward. Gets you access to the exclusive Transformer Slag Discord, where we rock out with the news, talk about the lore, share the lore, downloads, all kinds of stuff, save money on your hobby, sales, everything awesome there. Depending on what tier, of course, you might even get access to some gifts in the mail or even a Patreon listener question. And we got two Patreon listener questions. Why we have two? Because both of them are kind of similar, and I felt that they would go well together in one single video because they both have something to do with the printed media in different kind of ways. And as I started to look at these questions, I found myself kind of falling into the same category. So we're, and not to mention they're, they were submitted so close to each other. So rather than repeat myself over two different segments, I figured this would be a good one. So the first one comes from T formers 2002 and he wants to know, Hey Proto got another Patreon listener question for you. So for the past several years, like Marcelo has been making some amazing Transformers box art along with trading cards and other amazing stuff like that. Do you think there is a market for whole books containing that art? I know I would buy it. Would uh, would not? Uh, could you maybe do a short history lesson on past books of similar nature of Transformer books that you could buy, similar to how Bacon, uh, similar to your Bacon video game panel? Love what you do. Keep up the great work. Sorry if it was kind of long. No, it's never too long, brother. Don't worry about that. Uh, T Formers 2002. So keep that in mind with his question. And the next one here we have is is Guido, and he wants to know, Hey Proto, during the recent live stream you mentioned early Transformer novels. I remember reading these types of books when I was younger, around the time of Revenge of the Fallen. Uh, what is the history and the relation to Transformer novels outside of the children's books series?es and why do you think they fell out of fashion? Do you think they will have, have a place in the modern world? Or do you think it's too niche to even be worth it for Hasbro? Thanks for everything, Guido. So both of these questions essentially have to do with uh, printing books in some shape. With T-Formers 2002, he wants the art book kind of stuff. And, there, and let me tell you something. I love art books i absolutely i have so like not just transformers any franchise that i love i try to get art books of them just because there's just something that a jpeg file just can't do when you have a nice huge art book like i have so many uh, video game franchises whether it be Mega Man, zelda super mario all the capcom stuff from street fighter and, and snk stuff with king of fighters you know, and then when you, you dive into the Transformer stuff, my goodness, you know, the amount of art books that I've gotten throughout the years. A lot of them fall, unfortunately, on the Japanese side because they seem to be more, I guess, the printed media and printed books and documentation books still seem to be very more popular over there in Japan. Well, here in America, I'll get into a moment why we don't see them as much because there's a lot of issues. But they're essentially within the transformer world in terms of box art we only really got one decent book in the western world and that was the legacy book that idw did back in oh i want to say like 2011 2012 and it was a pretty decent book pretty good stuff in there and then there's a few other art books and stuff but a lot of them are just kind of scattered across different things whether it be stuff from the transformers prime TV series or the War for Cybertron games or miscellaneous media and stuff like that. Uh, most of them primarily done by IDW. And I'm going to mention specifically IDW because that kind of falls into a lot of things. Why don't we really see them anymore? Because they don't really sell well. I love them to death. I buy them all the time. Pre-order day one. But not a lot of people buy them, oddly enough, because there's people that are just more satisfied if they want to see a HD image of a piece of box art, they're literally two clicks away from Google Images and somebody has it up there. So that's kind of the sad truth about it is that they don't sell very well. The last one that I remember, I want to say it was the Visual History Guide, which was also, I think it was IDW, it was either IDW or uh, 
or uh, Dell Dell Press, but didn't sell well. Didn't sell well at all. People weren't interested, and and it's sad because you don't think I would love to have like a crazy, you know, full size HD Beast Wars box art book. Oh my goodness, I'd love that. I'd love that because so much of that Beast Wars box art, we never got the full shots because a lot of it was cut off on the card back. And then when you have the full shot of the box art on the tech spec, other pieces of the body is cut off from different other areas and it's tiny. And we never had a full box art. It would be so amazing if those files still exist. But the demand is is pretty difficult. There just isn't people who are interested in it. And... Again, the Western world has really only had, you know, one or two at best in terms of box art books. And the Japanese side of things, they've had tons of little mooks, you know, the magazine books and magazines and stuff. Like, I have a bunch of them in my collection, a lot of Beast Wars ones, primarily because I I wanted to hunt those down because I just feel we're never going to get something like that in the West. I want to be wrong. I want to be wrong because I want to buy it. I'm telling you, I want to buy it. I want to provide if they need uh, some source material stuff. I got plenty of it on this side, but it just seems like there really isn't uh, an interest. But I'm telling you, man, like it's it's a shame, but it has to do with just people are just not interested. There's just people that are not buying for people to, you know, publish like a, a 200 to 300 page book of all different kinds of box art and everything and to do all the work and to, to track everyone down and track all the pieces and, and put it all together and then bind it and print it up. And even if it's not a hardcover, just like a soft cover book, uh, like they did back in the day with like, let's say something like all spark almanac, you know, it's, there just wasn't that much of an interest. It, it, and it's, it's more so has to do with today because like I just mentioned, all spark almanac that came out around the time of, that peak of popularity for Transformers coming off of Revenge of the Fall in 2010, 2011, 2012. Today, we're in such a generation where kids don't care about the written, printed media that, you know, if they want that box art of a certain character, it's there on Google Images on their phone. So that's a sad truth about it. Now, to go into the second question, and it'll still apply to T Formers 2002's art book question is the question of novels and why those kind of fell out of fashion and it's kind of the same thing where they really peaked in pop like because there was there was always children's novels for transformers back in the 80s uh there was a whole bunch of them they were done by lady bird was one of the first ones i remember they were actually the ones who did the novelization of the 86 movie uh, and then there was uh, Ballantine books. It was called Ballantine or something. Ballantine books, which did the Find Your Fate books, which uh, were pretty fun too. But those were all more aimed at a younger demo. We didn't really see the full, you know, let's say uh, more than 250 pages novelized books until the Michael Bay movies got their popularity. And more specifically, once again, after Revenge of the Fallen. And you had those peak numbers of interest from around the world. And one of the very first books that I could remember that was made for an older demo was the 2007 book, uh, Ghosts of Yesterday. I think it was Transformers Ghosts of Yesterday, which I read many years ago. And that book actually came out a couple months before the 2007 movie. So it was really our first dive into the Michael Bay and movie universe, even though we didn't know what we were going to be getting. And that was like one of the first books. And they would consistently be putting out these kind of books and stuff every so often. And during that like peak popularity, there was a, tr- a trilogy of books. Um, it was Transformers Exodus, Transformer. I'm turning my head to look at my, my, uh, my bookshelf. Transformers Exodus, Transformers Exiles, and Transformers Retribution. There was like a trilogy of books that came out between 2010 and 2014. And to me, that's what put the nail in the coffin in a lot of ways in terms of the interest. Those were done by Del Rey books and they were written, uh, at least the first two were written by Alex Irvine and Alex Irvine, he kind of, you know, and people have kind of noticed this, he kind of didn't really know about Transformers. He just kind of went to the TF wiki, read the first line of any character and just kind of applied that. And the problem with that is people were noticing that he was reading the wiki entries of characters from Transformers Armada and using that incorrect information. It wasn't intentional. It wasn't intentional to like use those depictions of those characters in the Armada universe. 
or more specifically the Unicron trilogy, it's that he didn't know. He didn't know he was just, you know, it's the sad truth is when you sometimes get a, a writer that isn't in tune with the, the fiction. And it's no offense to Alex. It's just that's kind of what happened. And that first book, Exodus, was a hardcover book. Uh, it had an MSRP, and I'm looking at my physical one here, of uh, 27, $27.99 USD. And it sold terribly. It didn't sell well. It was 2010. People were already not reading books. When they went to do the sequel book to it, Exiles, uh, they're like, yeah, we're not doing hardcover anymore. It's going to be paperback, and it's going to be $7.99. And that book came out in 2011, and it sold terribly. So guess what happened? when By the time we got to Retribution, the final book in the trilogy, they had gotten rid of Alex Irvine. They thought maybe it was him. You know, I don't think it was him so much, but I think it's just people didn't care. And they got the writer, uh, David Williams, to do it. And that book, let me tell you something, that book sold so badly, so badly, that there's very few in the secondary market of that book. It sold for an MSRP of $7.99. And if you find a copy today in the secondary market, usually on Amazon, and you know how it is with Amazon, if no one has a book then the people who are selling it are asking crazy money, and it goes between $100 and $200, that book today. It's not that it's worth that, that's just what people are asking. If you go on like eBay and you look at sold listings of this book, yeah, they pop up for $10 and people slide in and buy it because no one's bidding against them because no one cares. But it's one of those books that's sold so poorly that it just has no market. Like, it's just, there's nothing of it. And that... The selling of that book was so bad by Delray Books that they just stopped. And Delray Books, like, they had a good run doing Transformer books between 2007 and 2014, but that Retribution book killed it. And after that, that was it. That was it. Like, you know, in between, you know, like that, we also had, like, you know, The Covenant of Primus came out, but that was more of a gimmick book. It was 100 bucks. That the transforming thing. It's supposed to be the Bible of Transformers. And even that didn't sell that great. That went up on on sale on Amazon also, unfortunately. With, and I believe that was written by, looking again, Justina Robinson or something. Robinson. And uh, didn't sell well. So the, the reality is, and this applies to both now questions, is that books don't sell well anymore. It, especially when it comes to, let's say, the Transformer fandom, books don't sell well. And going back to the art question, the art book question, just recently, last week, uh, the G.I. Joe fandom for years really wanted to have a really good art book for their box art. And they were just having so much difficulty of a publisher wanting to do it that a fan took it upon himself to do it, and he did a Kickstarter. And that you can look it up. That Kickstarter had just recently finished, and it was a fantastic book that he put together. It just had everything. It even had, like, the Street Fighter box art. Like, it was amazing, that book. And it shows that publishers are scared because they could really take a bath on this and lose a lot of money. And in the case of Del Rey books, they lost a lot of money. And then when it comes to some of those art books that I talked about, that was IDW. Whew, IDW has enough problems when it comes to Transformers in terms of low sales. I mean, I don't want to like, you know, I don't want to like knock it because I buy these books and I enjoy them. But Transformer comic books for IDW, real talk, guys, I don't care what anyone says, are some of the lowest selling books for IDW. Do you want to know what sells above Transformers for just IDW? Sonic the Hedgehog, G.I. Joe, Ninja Turtles, Star Wars. The last time we saw a Transformer book crack the top 200 on comic book sales was the Back to the Future Transformers comic. And the only reason why I know this stuff is because my comic book guy, who owns an amazing store, Lou of Sci-Fi Anime, shout out to him, he keeps track of those sales because he needs to know what to get, what is popular, what sells well, and not to mention from his own personal pull bin. But he's not going to use his store as a reflection of the entire world in terms of sales, but he does pay attention to what is going on. And Transformers never cracks it, ever. Even during those, you know, everyone celebrates the more to meets the eye books and Lost Light, but they sold terribly. They did not do well. Again, around the time of Mortimer's the Eye, Powerpuff Girls for IDW was selling better. You know, it's it's 
it's something you have to understand. Like the Transformer fans aren't really into buying books in any shape or form. They want to have physical figures and video games. And it's also a reflection of the the evolution of the fandom and how it's aging up and stuff. Um, I mean, look, I, I love the Burnham and Bircham Beast Wars book that we have, the comic right now. It's fantastic, but no one's buying it. And that that kills me because it's a fantastic book, but no one's buying it. And it's just a sad reality of the comic book industry. Look, IDW is on its way out. Sales are down. You know, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. And it is what it is, but that's kind of the answer of will we ever see this stuff? Maybe, maybe, but chances are if, if money is what talks, it probably won't be the case. And if you do see some kind of art books or stuff put together, it probably will be from the Japanese side of things. We got a fantastic Beast Wars uh, guidebook and documentation book with a lot of art stuff on the back from Million Publishing in Japan. You know, that book was amazing. Anyone who hasn't gotten it, get your hands on a copy of that before it shoots up in value or something. I hope I, I'm not responsible for that. But, you know, it's something that like there's you'll probably see it more from the Japanese side of things. I know a lot of Udon, shout out to Matt Moylan and the Udon crew, a lot of their art books that they publish are actually kind of localizations of Japanese art books, specifically their Mega Man stuff that they did in the past and some of their Street Fighter stuff. So chances are if we do see art books in the future, it might be localized stuff from a Japanese book. Uh, as it pertains to Marcelo's art, I would love to see more of his stuff done in, in some kind of a book. But it's about the market, and the market, unfortunately, is just not interested in the printed page, which is a shame, but it's true. So I hope that kind of answers the question. I know it's a bit of a downer, but it's kind of a reality of what's going on right now in the world. And, I mean, look, go find a bookstore. You know, Good luck with that. Chapters, Indigo... What's Barnes and Nobles? What else is left? Is even Chapters around anymore? I don't even know. You know, what was another one? Kohl's. I'm trying to think of some other bookstores that are, you know, sucking on fumes, you know, if they are, if they even exist at all in a world where kind of Amazon destroyed all of that. But it is what it is. And uh, again, if uh, if we do get something, you know, we'll talk about it on the podcast. Look, when that Beast Wars guidebook came out, you know, we were talking about it on the podcast. I was gushing about that one. But I hope that answers your question, guys, and I hope that uh, one day you get your wishes and these books do become a reality in the future, both it be art or novel. Love to read, too. Love to read also. Um, I mean, even on the Hasbro side of things, like, you know, Magic the Gathering used to do novels for years, years and years and years. They used to do novels. Since 1995, there was novels of Hasbro's Magic the Gathering brand. And in the past couple of years, they stopped doing it. They made them online only or digital because they knew it wasn't worth it to print them anymore. So I think that might be a reflection right there. Anyways, let me know what you think, guys. Let me know what your favorite Transformer novel was. And, you know, if there was an art book, who would you love to, what, what brand of Transformers you'd like to see of it? Share the discussion. Let us know what you think. And if you want to be a patron like Guido and Transformers 2002 or TF 2002, T-Formers 2002, excuse me, uh, patreon.com forward slash protoman or check the pin comment or the description below and let's rock out with the robots in disguise <laughs>